So uh, once you log on, uh, you'll go and search for Corel Draw X4. So I'm going to search here Corel and X4 is the green one. So I bring it up and you'll get a quick start menu. Uh, you don't really need that. So I'm going to close it. I'm going to click the new button and I'm going to get a palette where I can draw things. Up here is the dimension of my palette and I'm going to change it to 32 inches horizontally by 18 inches vertically. So it's kind of extreme landscape mode. This is the size of the laser bed, so notice these are in inches. Another thing that's convenient is to right click on the vertical uh, ruler, hit ruler setup, put the origin here at 18 inches, and then the origin will be placed uh, right here at the corner. So as I look at this piece here, you can, up here it tells me the size. So I'm going to make it one inch by one inch. And this tells me the center um, of its location with respect to this origin that we just defined up here. So I'm going to come over, I guess, about one inch in the x direction. And I'm going to go down minus one inch in the z direction, or sorry, y direction. And so I've got my square here. Now, before I do anything, um, I need to change the characteristics of the lines. So this printer is very sensitive about what color and thickness the lines are. So red is what we'll use, and what that is, that does vector cutting. And it has to be RGB red and hairline thickness. That's 0 .001 um, inches or one thousandths of an inch. So I'm going to make that change now from this default gray. So I'm going to come up here and frequently with Corel Draw, uh, it, you want to go to this little arrow, the pick tool, just to kind of get out of any of these other modes. Um, so I'm going to do that. Then I'm going to come down here to the lower right for the outline color. color it looks like a paintbrush. I double click. Whoop. You have to select the item of interest and then double click and out pops the outline pen window. So you're going to hit the color drop down and you're going to go other. The default is CMYK, cyan, cyan, magenta, yellow, and I forget what K means. That's used for printing. So we want to go to RGB in the drop down for the model. And then come over here to the name and select red. And OK. The default width is 0.5 points. We want to change that to hairline and then OK. So now this will print, it will cut on the cardboard. So let me go ahead and make another square. So I'm going to do a control C and a control V for copy paste and it should have made one right next to it. Now here I think we're close enough. OK, now here's a tool you can use in order to minimize work. You can go ahead and you can select multiple pieces. Um, actually, why don't I just select the whole thing? and then come down to the, the, the outline pin uh, pop-up window. It's not going to know what to put there because I have many different versions of colors, but you want to go RGB red, okay, it's already there. And then for the width, hairline, and it will take them all to that, that state. RGB red, hairline, okay. So I think we're okay. Remember the big box represents the size of the entire laser bed, and I've made things such that they're well within the 11 by 15. Okay. So this is our laser cutter uh, station. There are really three components to it. The first is the workstation, the computer which runs the laser. So we'll print from the laser just like we were, uh, sorry, we'll print from the um, computer just like we're printing to a laser printer, or it will be a laser cutter instead. So we'll get to that in a minute. Um, over here on the left, the big yellow thing is the laser cutter itself. This is where all the action is, and we'll be going into this part in, in great detail. On the right here is an equally important piece of equipment for, uh, because it allows us to um, not destroy the laser cutter very quickly uh, by, after just a few minutes use. It's a blower that um, moves air at a certain cubic feet per minute and it goes through these tubings down here and it, it sucks air from the laser enclosure 
through here, and this has uh, filters in it, which then exhausts to the uh, the room. So Basically, what, what the laser does is is incinerates the cardboard, burns it in a very controlled way, and so we're going to have smoke, and that smoke will immediately get all over the optics, and will immediately destroy those optics, unless this blower is on at all times. So to, uh, to operate the system, you need to uh, just lift up. Lift up here. It doesn't have uh, sort of stops on it or um, those pneumatic cylinders which cause it to fall down lightly. It'll crash down if you let it. So you gotta really be on top of it at all times and just gently open it, close it very gently. So here is the, uh, the laser bed itself. So what we're going to do is, what you will be doing is getting a piece of cardboard, and it has to be a piece of high quality cardboard. And by high quality cardboard, I mean a piece that's not warped. So you can see this is pretty um, unwarped, and this is what you want to have. So you want something that's flat. The size of the bed here is 18 inches by 32 inches. So if you have a piece that big, you can use it. Otherwise, you can use a smaller one. Thickness of the cardboard is important as well. So this uh, cardboard is a type that's thinner than a lot of cardboard. This is about a sixteenth of an inch, or 0 .0625, as you'll have to key it in uh, into the software. Other cardboard is about one eighth of an inch, which is 0 .125 inches. You take the cardboard and put it in the upper uh, left corner up against the rules here. These are metal rules which are calibrated in inches. It's kind of hard to see over here. Uh, again, because of the smoke that's sucked in this direction kind of covers it up. Um, but this piece is about 11 inches by roughly 15 inches and so we'll need to know that information uh, before we um, start the cut. Okay, so the way this system works is that uh, there's a laser in here. It's a 60 watt laser. Uh, it's an infrared laser, so you can't see the actual beam itself, but you can see the uh, burning of the cardboard. Now, uh, the way the system works is that, again, the laser comes out here, takes a right turn here, goes into the focus carriage, takes a right turn, so to speak, and goes down uh, after hitting the mirror and goes through the uh, lens and is focused at the right uh, distance from the, uh, the cutting table. Uh, what we'll do is we will try to fit in as many patterns as we can in this 11 by 15 uh, region because we don't want to miss the uh, cardboard and hit the honeycomb region here. And then we'll uh, scrunch them together to maximize uh, the cardboard using the software program CorelDRAW. So to print, I hit File, Print, and the name of the printer is VLS 6.60, and just like as if it were a laser printer, you hit Print, nothing happens. However, what you need to do uh, is click this red icon down here in the tray. It's called the Universal Laser Systems Control Panel, so you click that red and lo and behold your part is there, or your, not your part, your drawing is there in red. If you find that some of these parts are not red, then they need to be modified in Corel Draw to the uh, RGB red hairline. Um, as I'm going to change the settings, so you guys are going to be using cardboard, so hit uh, paper or cardboard, paper, and the material thickness kind of tells the laser how much power to um, give out. Probably the best thing to do is just make it 0.125, which is an eighth of an inch for everything, even for something a little thinner. Frequently if it's thinner it's more dense, so that probably should be okay. You'll hit apply, okay. So I'm going to click the on button, activate the engraver if you hover, Come over here to these controls over here, and um, I hit focus view. If I click that, and then come over here, I will click right here at the extreme uh, corner of all my parts. And what's going to happen is the focus carriage is going to move over to that point and show me where it's going to cut. Or, and um, so 
once I click here, I want you to watch where the focus carriage goes over here. Okay, and that's the most left and the furthest down of any part that I, any piece that I will cut, so I know I'm not going to miss the uh, cardboard. Now I'm going to have the laser go into the upper left corner. The way I do that is I move this guy uh, over further left and above what I'm going to cut, and I click here and we'll see it move. So I click. Now that we now we can close the door, so I'm going to walk over, turn on the blower. Right now it's set for 200 cfm cubic feet per minute. That's moderately high, so we'll go with that for now. Um, and you just press the middle button, lights up. You'll hear the whir of kind of a uh, jet engine, so, so to speak. I've got the blower on. The system is shut. And I can walk over and turn it on by pressing this big uh, green button, start engraving this print job. So you might want to have a buddy system, somebody to press this, somebody to watch it, and kind of make sure it's behaving as it should. So. Um, Let's turn it on and see what happens. So you can see that one fell out. Uh, this cardboard is not perfectly flat, but it's quite good. This order, just turn this guy off. And now we can hear the blower going. Um, the fumes are not toxic in any way, uh, but I leave this on for a couple seconds, and then I just toggle it off. So the best way, I suppose, would be just to lift gently this way and see that each piece is, is not attached. It's conceivable that um, as long as the system isn't moved, um, you could do a recut if for some reason you uh, didn't get through the cardboard. I don't expect that to be the case unless the uh, laser has a significant problem. So I just lift it up like this and I can collect my parts to glue together. Press. You can see that they're quite, they're quite sharp, so it's a very precise instrument. And there you have it. Um, one other type of cardboard you can use. Um, I don't work for Safeway, but I eat the pizza. This is a thick, a thin piece, um, about a sixteenth, but it's quite flat. You just want to make sure that you don't have pizza residue on it. But this would be a good one. Um, they're, I think, around. Depending on the size of pizza you get, they can be quite large. Look, you will immediately break the lens if you forget to turn on the blower um, because that smoke that you really didn't see, except in some cuts, uh, the smoke being pulled aggressively out of the chamber will just fill the chamber, it will get on the, um, the lens, it will immediately cause the lens to start absorbing a huge amount of energy. Uh, without the junk on the lens, it's very, very transparent. Um, otherwise, it would heat up a great deal because it's a very high power density, a lot of energy in a localized area. Uh, 